the seating of the church, we forget we forget to be the church. Amen. 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 So I'm so glad, so glad, so glad to see all of you today. Now, my brothers and sisters, it is preaching time. Right. Church, say amen. amen. And we have a preacher in the house, Reverend Dr. Leo Mia Kelly, who has made her name great across the life and breadth of the entire AME church. Yes. Uh, not only yes. has she served as a general officer in the judicial board, judicial council, but we just, we thank God for all the things that her ministry has provided the 11th Episcopal District. She's been a presiding elder. She's been a pastor. She has done all of the things that the great, great ministers of the church have done. She is very well educated. She has an EDD, an MM, a Master of Divinity, a Bachelor's in Music from the University. I mean, she is an accomplished lady. And I reckon sometime from now, if we don't try to get her face on the stamp, we have been doing her an injustice. Amen. All right. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Um, not only that, but she's a proud member of Zeta Phi Beta for Sorority Incorporated. Church say amen. You better act like you can get excited about that. <laughs> amen. But I'm so glad to have her come preach this Mother's Day because um, for me, it's an honor to have her because when I was, um, when I was a young girl preacher uh, trying to practice my skills and my craft, she opened up the doors of her church to me uh, without, and she would bring me in there and tell me to take what little bit she had to give me and go get some books <laughs> and learn some more stuff. So I, I, I would appreciate everything she's done for me, and it's just a small, small thing to be able to do to have her come preach to us on the, this Mother's Day occasion. So if everyone would extend their arms out to Reverend Dr. Kelly. You just extend your arm out now, and in the same motion of prayer, just say, preach, preach. Dr. Kelly preach. preach. And after singing of the next selection, she will do just that. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of prayer. <laughs> I also, I also, also want to tell you to type in her name on YouTube. She has two videos on YouTube, one of an original recording that she composed, and another uh, video of, of song meditations. Um, it's very popular, it's, it's, it's going around on YouTube, and I would challenge you to type that up in, in your meditation, play those videos uh, for your own personal prayer. Amen.
I want to thank this beautiful pastor, the Reverend, I started to say doctor. He acts like one, and he's going to be one. Oh, Trey amen. Green. Amen. And his lovely wife, Hester, who is going to be honored today as a brother for this beautiful welcome to Payne Chapel of West Palm Beach. I want to say that he is to be congratulated for his consistent, dedicated service, not only to Payne Chapel, but the AME denomination. Amen, amen. Such a fact. Thanks to this distinguished group of ministers here, I have been a teacher for one of the ministers, the Board of Examiners, and it's a joy to see you here. And your distinguished group of officers, yes. they are so hospitable and hard workers. And to this very beautiful congregation, amen. amen. I amen. said San Gina came up, and uh, I know so many of you here through the years. I'm so happy to be here. And I thank God for my family coming today to support me. All of my, I have three children. And like my daughter from Georgia came and my, both of my sons and their grandchildren here as well. I'm a great grandmother, amen. Amen, amen. Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Today my text will come from Exodus, the 20th chapter, and the 12th verse. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon this land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee. So, but the subject today will be, today we honor our mothers. You see, our text tells us why we should honor both our parents, because they have the first responsibility to teach us right from wrong. And then if you uh, obey them with wise instructions, your days will be long. And so the scriptures tells us about first uh, what we should do as parents and as our children. First it says in Ephesians 6 chapter first verse, address the children, saying to them, obey your parents in the Lord, children. However, when children become adults, they have the responsibility to their parents as well. In Proverbs, the 23rd chapter, 22nd verse said, hearken unto thy father that begot thee, and, and, and don't despise, not thy mother, when she is old. Now, some of us, uh, our parents are not here today. And I, I, was, I was saying to my family and friends, this is the first year without my mother. Uh, three days coming up, she will, will have left us six months ago. But she wanted me to be strong. She was glad I was a minister and, and I was a preacher. So I know that how you feel now, this is my first year feeling that. And I asked some people to come to church and they say, oh, my mother passed, I can't go. But I'm glad to see you here because what I wanna say to you is that it does not matter if your parents are dead or alive. The Lord wants all of us to honor our fathers and our mothers because they deserve the utmost respect from us uh, because on this earth, they, be, they are the ones, the mother especially, be your mother and my mother did not have an abortion. That's why we are here today, yes, amen, so yes. we can make a difference in this world. Yes. Amen. So let's honor our mother today. To God be the glory for the things she has done and she has said. So let's reflect and honor our mother's singing, teachings and her wisdom as a virtuous woman in Proverbs, the 31st chapter and 10th verse. It says to us, 
that she is concerned about our life. She's concerned and caring about uh, her children's education, about getting a job and all through their life and when they have a family and serving in the community with a noble service, uh, being a member of a church in good and regular standing. Oh, she's concerned about that. Amen. If that's not the case today, think about it. Amen. And do it. Can you visualize her being a, a virtuous woman, uh, with, which means she's excellent? In the Jewish and uh, the Hebrew interpretation in the Bible, it calls her excellent. Uh, in that definition, it, what it says is that God calls her to be a woman who has her act together. In Proverbs 31, 10, that becomes the epitome of a definition that she has a Christian virtue in a feminine fashion. This woman is the star of virtuous woman. Amen. We have a lot of them in here today. Amen. And she is a, a, a very progressive and forceful person. She is incredible in her balance of her life and her family. Yes. Amen. Yes. She pays attention to every aspect in equal uh, measure of, for excellence. She strives for excellence in everything she does. Uh, I was looking at your book today, and it's nothing but an excellent way of saying Happy Mother's Day. Amen. We know already I'm not preaching to others. I'm preaching. I'm not supposed to be preaching to the choir, but I want to tell you that we honor you mothers for what you are doing, and you're Amen. doing a good job. Amen. Yes, Amen. she is a lady, a real lady, a unique and valuable lady. She's a sensitive, temperate, com competent lady who also has her ambitions, yet she possesses, she is, she is a classy lady, and she has a lot of finesse. I see that in here today. Amen. 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 Not only is she a virtuous woman, but she is a strong Christian spiritual woman. She's a praying woman. Yes. Amen. And then mothers have taught their children how to pray. And, and, and as we learn how to pray as mothers, we teach our children how to pray. But when God created the world and everyone in it, he gave us dominion, a free will, over this world. Yes. Amen. And, uh, and since he, he said that he's not a man that should die, he gave us dominion over this world. Amen. And God blessed all of us. Amen. And he, he knows our problems, but he cannot solve them automatically yes. and he will not solve them automatically because he can't go back on his word that he told us to to ask him and it shall be given he told us to seek and we shall find he told us to knock and it shall be given amen but he says that that's how we are going to do it to get him to cooperate and work with us Amen. He says that in Matthew. Okay, but then Matthew is the very first book of the New Testament. Okay, so it undoubtedly uh, we have not been praying as much as we should with all the problems we have of gun violence. And y'all know about that good up in here. And we have all kind of problems. It's all in the water. We have all kind of problems of, of climate control. Amen. But we cannot get these problems solved in our families and in this world uh, and, unless we uh, ask him to help us. Yes. Amen. Now, yes. I, then he say, I don't think you got it. He says, so I'm going into Revelation, and then I'm going to tell you what I mean when I say, you, I'm asking you to, to ask me to come into your, the affairs of your life. Amen. He said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. I've been knocking in, in Matthew. But not that many people been answered. Yes. And I can't come. And, and he said, because, why he say? He said, I'm going to give you a visual picture of me standing at the door knocking. 
He said, because see, I can't bust in your house. If I bust in your house, if you somebody bust in your house right now, you could call police and have them arrested. God says that he can't do it either. Okay, so he wants us to get that message that he's waiting on us to pray. Amen. That's, and I read some statistics saying that we are not praying enough. Amen. A few people pray. Amen. I'm talking about praying and asking God to help you. He is willing to help us. Amen. But uh, uh, then I'm trying to figure out, but uh, if God uh, wants us to pray, amen, uh, he's testing our faith too. Because he says in the same verse, ask and it shall be given. Yes. So maybe you ask one time. God didn't do nothing, so you, you didn't keep going. He said, I told you to seek if I don't do it when you ask me. And then he says, and then I, then I said, knock, keep on asking me. Because with your faith, I'll give you grace. That's, yes. your, that's your gift. And I want to see how much faith you have. And then he says that, okay, then why do we have to pray? And in and, and Second Chronicles 7 to 14, he says, if you do one thing, I'll do another. You know, if there's an if, then there's a then. If my people who are called by my name, who are his people? People, Christians. What is his name? Jesus what? Christ. And Christ comes from our name as what? Christians. Well, we have his name. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and s pray. Oh, I didn't know he said that. And seek my face. Yes. He say, and will turn from your wicked ways. Now, you can't just ask him and, this, and live any kind of life. Amen. Okay, you know he will answer those prayers. The prayers of the righteous availeth much. Okay, yes. keep that yes. in mind. He say, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. Amen. We're waiting for the land to be healed. And we as mothers, we are concerned about our children. We are concerned about the problems of, of, uh, of the whole world. And then, but we honor you today because you are concerned. Amen. So mothers uh, know that it takes prayer. Yes. Amen. So, but then the Lord's folks say they might not know, amen, that there's a one-minute prayer they could pray, amen, that you know, just share it today. Okay. So uh, then some of the mothers already know how to pray. Amen. That's why they are here today. Amen. Our mothers knew the answer that we must pray and pray right. You know how the mothers say, you better pray, but you better pray right. Amen. Right. Don't tell me that it's not no good, right, or wrong way to pray because there is. I want to give you a little story. I was uh, at the CEC, and I had left uh, – my uh, my charger home for my phone. So I asked, could I be excused for the lunch period and go buy one in the shopping center in Orlando? And so it was during lunchtime, so I had to eat lunch in the restaurant. And uh, I try to eat healthy. So I saw a Greek restaurant. I know they serve good salads. I went in there and I got served. And then uh, after I finished eating, uh, a young uh, man came to me to, uh, who served, gave me my, uh, my, my, you know, my bill. And I looked at this big medallion, big as my cross, around his neck. I said, sir, I don't tell you, it looks kind of strange. I said, what kind of a symbol is that? He said, oh, I'm a Satan worshiper. And I said, well, I ate this food. Yeah, I said, I said, what you mean about, I say, tell me about that. That's, that's a religion? He said, yeah, that's a religion. And uh, I said, um, what do y'all do? He said, we pray. I said, I said, what do you pray for? He said, I pray for the gangsters, the persons who, who in prison, the, the, the killers, everybody like that. We pray for them. So I learned my lesson. Well, I was glad to get out of there. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go in the house of the Lord. So then, what that 
did to me, it changed my attitude about going around saying, hey, pray for me. You don't know who you asking to pray for you. And you get that, you see them on the TV talking about, let me lay your hands. Come here, darling, let me lay. I said, I don't know who you are with you laying your hands on me. You got to know if they know. That's why our mothers say, you what? Amen. Uh, Amen. Uh, uh, the, you know, they'll tell you, they, they know the answer that you got to pray and pray right. Okay, now the first way of praying right is you got to know the right God to pray to. Right, That's where now. I'm coming. Amen. You know, he told me he wasn't done praying for the God I prayed to. Amen. We had an understanding of that. And I ain't never been back there when I went to the, uh, nowhere, nowhere near a country. But pray to the right God. Now, the Indians, some of the Indians, I can't say all of them, but some of them pray to a mighty God. You know, the choirs, I don't have nothing to say about the choirs, but they have to know the theology of the song. Yes. I never did like the song, What a Mighty God We Serve. Because now, I'm going to tell you why. Okay, so mighty, so you got to know the theology to know what you have to sing and preach and teach. And so... They worship the sun. They have the sun gods. Of course, that's the god with the small g. But I'm telling you, I worship the god who made the sun. All right, now. That's called the almighty god, the all-powerful god. Okay, and then when you worship, be careful now with your horoscope. That's about the what? You don't know whether it's the stars. I don't worship. You can't worship the stars. Don't worship. I got to get up every morning and read my horoscope. And then, then, you know what? Instead of getting up every morning and reading your Bible, and God will tell you what your day will be like, even better. So, you, so now, you're going to pray for the almighty God, because he's all powerful. The eternal God never dies. The everlasting God never dies. Okay, and after you do that, there's A-C-T-S, X. Okay, A-C-T-S. Okay, A stands for adoration. C stands for confession. T stands for thanksgiving. Now, you haven't asked him for anything yet. And then the S stands for supplication. Ask him to supply your needs. Okay, I can give you. I work in a hospital at, in Miami. It's Catholic. And the, all the whole hospital, I go once a week in the morning. And they know when I'm there, too, because if I don't get on the PA, they know I'm not there. But I have to say a one-minute prayer. The doctors and the nurses, they got to get back to work. If they want to hear it, and somebody told me, so I won't be late, the director of the building be there listening. I said, I got to be there. Yeah. 9.30. Okay, so one minute. Almighty God. Okay, just to call his name. He, he knows who he is. You don't have to tell a whole lot of stuff. Then after that, you got to, you start with your ex. A, adoration. Oh, God, I praise you. I honor you. I bless your name. You throw it down. A, C. C, confession sins. Lord, the way you ain't be inclusive, say something that's going to include everything. Oh, God, I confess all my sins of omission and commission. You threw it back. Okay. Then you're going to clean up them little books that God is writing in every day about what you did wrong. Get them books clean every time you yeah. pray. And they see, T. Then, you, then you're going to thank him for what he already did. You remember the nine leopards? There were one of them, thank God, Jesus, for what he already did. So you're going to do that. Say, oh, God, I thank you. Now, I don't know about you, but I always be asking God for something I ain't got yet, what I want him to do. I said, thank you for what you've already done. Thank you for what you're doing now. And thank you for what, you, what you're going to do in my life. Okay, then you, then you can say, oh, God, with supplication, supply my needs, God, whatever you want him to do. Right now, I'm telling you, Lord, help me to preach. Oh, God, this is whatever you want God to do. Then you ask him. And then, okay, then when you're going to close that prayer, uh, you will need a mediator. <laughs> And so that, for us, it is Jesus. So you have to say what? In the name of Jesus, we yes. pray. Amen. You got your one-minute prayer. 
Amen. And, and when we do that, uh, you just do that, practice doing that, those. And then when you want to talk to God a long time, you got time to do that. But you could do something like that during your lunch break, during your coffee break. They don't start calling, tell me I can't pray on the job. I can go and take my little break and I can pray. Amen. Amen. So the end of the prayer. Amen. Now all our mothers know is that God answers prayer. All our mothers know of who God is. They know that God is the Father, and they know Jesus is the Son. And then he, we know that the Holy Spirit works in us. Amen. Hey, they may not know the terminology of uh, uh, representing the uh, theological terms, uh, uh, like us from ITC. They may not know that. But here I'm saying about our mothers, uh, they might not know like black theology, uh, womanist theology, systematic theology, but 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 uh, she knows who God is. Uh, our mothers do. Uh, amen. She may not know that God is omnipresent uh, in the terms, but she knows the meaning. Uh, she knows that you can call on Jesus in the morning, in the noon, and in the night. Oh, yes, uh, uh, she knows the time uh, when she can pray. Uh, and that's right. And, and, uh, and she knows that uh, he may not come when you call him, but he'll be his own time God. She knows that he'll be there when she pray. Huh? She knows, uh, amen. Uh, a mother knows because she knows who God is. He's never too late and he's never too early. Huh? All our mothers may not know the meaning of omnipotent, huh? yeah. uh, but they can know the meaning of the word. And they say that they know how we know they know because they say all oh, power. Is in his hand. They know that's why we ought to hold on to God's unchanging hand. Oh, yes, she knows it. Uh, uh, she knows that he holds us in the palm of his hand. The Catholics have little, they love that. Amen. And he holds all of us. We can't fall when he holds us. Can't nobody touch us when he holds us. Because God is a mighty, almighty God. All oh, that the, 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 he keeps saying, Almighty, Amen. And make sure you know who he is. Uh, and then God got so much power, Amen. Uh, being omnipotent, she glows because she tells us every now and then, uh, I want you to know, I know who God is. <laughs> He's too high, we can't get over him. <laughs> He's too low, we can't get under <laughs> He's so wide. Can't get around it. We must come in at the door. Huh? Uh, we ought to just praise God for our mothers who kept the faith and taught us uh, uh, no matter what was going on in our lives, keep trusting God and the Father. Keep trusting Jesus, the Son, and, and keep your faith in prayer every day. Keep reading the word and keep teaching uh, the people. And remember that our mother's prayers will follow us. Yes, yes. Amen. Although our mothers are gone, our mother's prayers is going to follow us. Amen. And I know Amen. what my mother said to me as I closed. She said, one day, one of my sons sitting out there had had surgery. And she, was, she died when she was 95. But when she was about 85, I went to visit her. She lived in Georgia. And I went up there and she said, Yo-Yo, why you didn't tell me Wilfred was sick and had surgery? I said, Mama, I can't tell you nothing like that. I can't tell you nothing like that. And so she looked at me and she said, You a preacher. And she said, You tell me every time I ask you something, you tell me. And so I, she said, how do I know who to pray for? And I said, oh, this is strong mama here. So I went to talking, because I didn't worry about my mama having no heart attack or getting sick or nothing. And so I did that. And then uh, she 
made me strengthen. She strengthened my faith in God for a senior citizen. When they want to know something, and they tell you they want to know it, she lived till 95, so that show didn't kill her. And she didn't die from nothing like that either. She lived for a long, long life, they said, natural causes. So my point today is uh, trust in God. Pray like your mother prayed. And then your mother's prayers are following you. And all she was trying to do, amen, don't neglect her. Amen, don't ever make fun of her. And don't disgrace her. And teach our children the same. Because all she tried to do is to teach us and try to help us to live a godly Christian life so we can live a long time like the Bible say and make a difference in this world. God bless you. Have a happy Amen. Mother's Day. Amen. Let us all, everyone that is able, let us stand all over the church. Everyone that is able, let us all stand. At this point, I think it's only right that we offer salvation to someone here today. Your position in life is never to feel like you're without a mother. God, the creator, is the ultimate father and also the ultimate mother. And in that, we understand that we have a life that begins and it ends. But it all begins in him. Today, your life may have begun. But you may not have started living because you don't appreciate your godly mother. As well as your godly father. The God that we serve says, I just want to have an opportunity to love you. That's it. I don't want any money from you. I don't want any, anything that's going to kill you. I just want to love you in a way that you can love me back. Today, you may be without a church home, and you may not see that as not having a mother. You may not see the absence of a church family as the absence of family. But today, you can fix that part of it. You can give God your heart. You can give the church your service. The doors of the church are open today. I invite whoever would like to to come. If you would like to come and to pray, this your first Mother's Day without a mother and you're feeling it, and you don't know how to let it out, come bring it to the altar. If you would just like to cast or turn whatever you're going through over unto this table, draw near with faith. Make this the day that you let it go and let God have his way. The doors of the church are open. Will you come? We open the altar now for prayer. All those who will make concession and general concessions to the Lord, come now and cast your cares upon the altar.
everyone would just touch hands and, and agree all over the room. Yesterday, yesterday morning, we buried somebody's mother. Um, that same afternoon, I went to visit someone else's mother in the hospital. You really don't know how blessed you are to have a mother, to have had a mother. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father God, we thank you for the gift that is our mothers. Sometimes up, sometimes down. Sometimes almost level to the ground. But no matter where we are, God, you gave us somebody that would be there in the physical to pick us up, to dream for us, to hope for us, to pray for us, to love for us when we didn't know how. And we say thank you. Bless our mother today. Wherever she is, whether she's with us or not, bless her. Thank you. God, we say hallelujah, hallelujah for the gift of motherhood and for everything that you wanted for us through her. We thank you for that, too. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Everyone said together, amen, amen, amen and amen. Amen. We're so glad for the message today. Can we give God another hand clap of praise for the message? and the messenger, hallelujah. We thank you, Reverend Dr. Kelly, for blessing our souls on today, amen. And it's hard to have a message like that and not respond to it in gratefulness. So we wanna worship God now through our giving. You cannot beat God at his giving no matter what you do. The more that you give to God, the more he will surely give back to you. The Giver's Creed is about to appear on the screen at any moment. Let's say it together as we prepare our gifts. This is my seed. It shall meet all my needs. I give it today because I obey my God and his command. My tithe is out of obedience. My offering is my sacrifice. My return shall be magnified because I've learned to give right. I'm the head and not the tail, a lender and not a borrower. I'm on top and not the bottom. Because I give, I am blessed in the city and in the field. I'm blessed because I give my God my best. Today and every day, I am blessed. Amen. Today we're going to have the benevolent offering, which is designed to help those less fortunate than us. And then we will also have our public offering where we bring our tithes and offerings. Amen. Don't spend all your money at Red Lobster, oh mama. Church, uh, <laughs> amen. God bless you with a mama and to be able to give. You ought to give some back to him too. Our young people will be standing with a basket during the public offering representing the YPD. So please give generously to our youth department and the youth ministry. Haven't the youth choir, haven't they been awesome today? Come on, let's give them a hand. And Brother Bell is to my left and to your right if you have Visa, Debit, MasterCard, and etc. Amen.
All right, now we know that the month of May is TGIF, amen. What does that stand for? Thank God it's fellowship. Not TGI, someone says it's not Friday. It's not, it's not TGI Friday. It's not thank God it's Friday. It's thank God it's fellowship. So when you come around the table, we're going to start on the left side and the right side, coming around the outer aisles. Find somebody to fellowship with. Shake the pastor's hand. Shake one of the minister's hand. Shake some hands on the way back because we're fellowship. We're all about the fellowship this month. And we're going to culminate this month with Family and Friends Day. So we ask all of our Christmas, Mother's Day, and I mean, excuse me, all of, uh, all of everybody who's here, all of our guests, come back at the end of the month for Family and Friends Day because we're going to have a wonderful time on the 28th. We're renting out Gaines Park. We're bringing the slides out, the bounce houses, the barbecue grills. Church, say amen. amen. It is going down. And then we're going to have worship on that Sunday morning, the fifth Sunday, and we got uh, man, we got a gravy train coming in here on biscuit wheels. A pastor by the name of Marcus Gibson. And he is going to tear this place up again and rebuild it back up to speed. So I just want y'all to be ready for that weekend because it's T-G-I-F. All right, so let us stand on the, on the right side, on the left side. We're going to come down and bring our offerings. Come see my young people. Middle section.
Let's all stand. Father God, we thank you for these gifts. We thank you for the ability to give. We ask now, God, that you would take these gifts and multiply them for the building of your kingdom here on earth and that you would restore fourfold unto every person for the sacrifice they have made. This is our prayer in Jesus Christ we, we pray. Amen. All things come with thee, O Lord. Everybody sing. You may be seated. Amen. All right. Now, it is Mother's Day, and we want to thank the stewardesses for uh, being in charge of Mother's Day. At this time, there are some presentations that need to be made. I'm going to turn it over to Sister Miriam Wallace. Let's give her a hand as she comes. Is she? We were just here a minute ago, I promise. When you help the children out, mothers, if you raise your hand. As they come, they're coming to give you the carnation. I don't want them to play the guessing game. Reverend Kelly. Mrs. Green. And Mrs. Lanier. Man, let's give all the mothers a hand, clap of praise. And <laughs> certainly grateful for the mother in my house, and uh, she does a good job getting us dressed and ready for church. Amen. So we, you see, she put us on. She put us in blue today. So we we uh, we're glad about it. Amen. All right, um, Hearst Chapel. Listen, I didn't see you. You didn't see me. That's just going. We're going. Brother Jenkins, we're just going to leave it at that, all right? Don't get me in trouble with your pastor today. I ain't see you. you <laughs> oh, okay, all right, all right. So we good to go. We good. <laughs> all 
All right, did not our hearts burn within on today? Amen. We had a, such a wonderful, wonderful time. Oh, is that right? Brother, Brother John Jenkins is your cousin, Dr. Kelly? Okay, all right. It's a whole bunch of cross, everybody in here related, about two, three. Uh, we got the Hasties over here out of Hearst Chapel. We got, uh, we got the Halls and everybody just kind of, so we all tied. We all family. It's all right. We all family. <laughs> Amen. Let's, now, as we prepare to leave this place and never from the presence of God, I want to just one more time thank the stewardess board. So let's give the stewardesses a hand for how they led us so excellently on today. Now, treat mama right today. Treat mama right. Don't make her do nothing she don't want to do. Amen? Amen. If she didn't cook it, don't ask for it. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Let us all stand to our feet as we prepare to receive our benediction. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Our benediction by our guest speaker, Reverend Dr. Leomia Kelly. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit right now abide with you and you and you and you yes. and you yes. forevermore that the church safe.